Hello, everyone. It's a pleasure to welcome you once again for our IWT symposium. Uh, we will have uh, two cases today, one from uh, Santiago de Chile and uh, the other one uh, from uh, Madrid. Uh, it's a pleasure to welcome from the, for the first time uh, Pedro Delgado and his team uh, today. So I would like to remind you uh, the principle of uh, the webinar. It is an interactive symposium, and uh, Lucian Markovici will be moderating the chat today with me. Hi, Lucian. So uh, please uh, feel free to ask any questions and, uh, as usually, to uh, join the debate and to answer the polls uh, during uh, the cases uh, presentation. So uh, today we have uh, two cases, Paola Ramirez and uh, René Jorquera from uh, Santiago de Chile. And the second case, Diego Conqueras and uh, Pedro Delgado. So, Paula, I see you are connected. Yeah, hello, Alan. Good morning. Good morning. How are you doing? Good morning here. It's quite early. Here. It's very early uh, in Chile now. I'm sorry. <laughs> if you are ready, you can share, please, your screen uh, for the presentation. And please uh, just uh, stop sometimes to ask our panelists. Um, good morning, everyone. My name is Paula Ramirez. I am currently doing my IWC Fellowship at Clinical in Design, Santiago de Chile. And thank you, Alan, again, for your invitation to this webinar. <clears throat> we present a case. There's an audio maybe connected. We present a case of a 23-year-old right-handed man who has been involved in a car accident one month ago. He refers hitting his hand against the steering wheel and dashboard. And after that, he presents persistent pain in the, um, on the radio and volar side of the left wrist associated with a um, functional impairment. Initially, he was treated at another center he had pain in the anatomical snap box and pain in the actual compression of the uh, thumb. So, um, when all these so with all these um, physical findings, what are you thinking of? And based on that, what study will you ask for initially? So, uh, Paula, you are asking for uh, possible diagnosis uh, here. And yeah. uh, what kind of exam we uh, we could uh, ask? Uh, ask for it. Yes, yeah, I think initially. I think we can ask uh, uh, one of our young uh, colleagues. Uh, uh, the first one I will see, Tadeusz, <laughs> you are in front of me. Could you? Yeah, OK. So in this very early moment of the diagnosis, uh, what we should consider is all some uh, problem with scaphoid possible fra omitted fracture or SL uh, instability. And I would start uh, investigation about after clinical assessment about, I would ask for x-rays, simple x-rays, AP, lateral, and x-ray with fist, clenched okay. fist, uh, to see if there is any SL diastasis. And maybe, like, okay, as a second row, uh, ultrasound and MRI. Okay, MRI, you say, uh, okay, so uh, some imaging, it's, it's uh, quite simple. Uh, yeah. I, yes. Paul, I think you can, uh, you can go on with your case. <clears throat> yes, just Please. remember everyone that um, the injury was like a little bit over a month ago. So uh, these are the x-ray. What, what do you expect to find on the x-ray? Tadi Bush or someone else uh, from our young colleagues? <laughs> okay. Um, what do you see on the, the X-rays, the simple X-rays you have? Well, basically, yeah. Uh, uh, well, there is no. Um, I wouldn't assess uh, SL space as a special diastasis. So this is the first thing. What I, I know, we have just two simple X-rays, so AP and lateral, and uh, also there is um, axis of um, I don't, 
I wouldn't assess this as uh, this instability. Mm, yeah. So I would ask for for MRIs or ultrasound or maybe X-ray with clenched fist. Because uh, no, nothing is uh, is obvious on uh, this uh, this X-ray. So I agree with you. Someone who would like to make a comment on the the X-ray, maybe. Lucian. Uh, I, the only thing I, I see is uh, is something strange in the in the scaphoid, uh, like a reabsorption or uh, something like this. But it's not clear, so we need to uh, maybe I I would uh, ask also for a scaphoid specific uh, views to to understand it better. Okay, so uh, some special uh, X-rays from. Uh... Scaphoid view and uh, MRI or uh, CT scan. Someone else would like to make a comment? Because uh, there, there is nothing obvious on. Uh... So, yeah, so. Um, but Paola, I, I think you can, oh, yes. Yeah, I agree that the, the, the XO were pretty normal, as you can see. Um, so, if we are, if we are thinking, you know, like a hidden fracture, uh, would you maybe ask for an MRI or um, CT scan to um, see better? And in this case, the patient has already taken a CT scan. So does anyone want to describe these coronal views of the CT scan? Others support first? <laughs> we can see, uh, we have Diego, our our uh, colleague from Madrid, what do you think? Uh, I want to uh, want to choose uh, any of these options. Okay. Yes. So, uh, uh, would like would you like to uh, describe the, the ah okay image? Okay. Yes. What do you see? That is we what have we have a, a an scaphoid fracture, maybe with a. a uh, reabsorption of uh, a little of bone, maybe a uh, three or four millimeters, and um, no displacement, no major displacement, but um, maybe in this position, uh, no, we don't have a, a, sag a sagittal or lateral vision, but uh, in the in the trapezium. Um, Maybe a, a, a impactation of the of the of the bone and reabsorption. Of, um, <clears throat> yeah. So, the, so the fractures that are visualized seems to have a certain evolution time, with mm -hmm. some degree of uh, bone resorption, as Diego says, um, that generate these cavities. And we do have the sagittal views. So here they are. Okay. So in these sagittal views, we can identify a little bit of flexion and a little bit of displacement of the scaphoid. Um, remember that the scaphoid is 90% uh, covered by cartilage and does not tolerate more than one millimeter of displacement or angulation. So if you look also with the tension, there's an articular gap of um, like a step off at the SCT joint as well. And here in the axial view, we can see a scaphoid waist fracture, maybe even proximal pole, and a vertical fracture as they suppress it. And this is a 3D reconstruction. So in summary, two fracture lines are visualized, uh, one in the scaphoid with a little displacement, generating a little handbag deformity. <laughs> And one in the trapezium with an inside articular line defined as a worker type four, which is a vertical fracture and the most common one. With all this binding and all this information, how will you treat this patient? I think now we can do the poll, Alan. I, yes, I, I already launched uh, the poll, so mm -hmm. uh, I think we can uh, ask uh, uh, our panelists. Uh, uh, for their opinion about uh, their therapeutic options. Yeah, so anyone keen for a conservative treatment 
taken into account, like a, we have only a minimal scaffold displacement, maybe it could be considered. I think Paola, we can... can. Can I ask you again how much time yeah. uh, passed from uh, from injury to to today to the, yeah. to the CT image? Yeah, one month between four and five weeks. Actually. Okay. But but for for so lo um, low amount of time, it's it's really uh, not this frequent that uh, that kind of uh, bone reabsorption. So how did you uh, motivate it? How do we what? Sorry. Uh, how do you explain this this bone uh, absorption after four weeks? What what uh, was 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 your uh, thoughts about it? Um, I think there's many. Uh, at first, we believe um, what the patient said. The patient said he had this car accident a month ago, hitting his hand against the steering wheel. So he um, relayed uh, his injury um, with that accident. But maybe he had this uh, fracture two weeks or one month before the accident. So we cannot we cannot know. And and this is a story that he refers. <laughs> On the trapezium, I think the uh resorption is not so uh, important. This is here we have uh, the image. Sorry, uh Rene wanted to make a comment, Rene. <laughs> and after it Hi. Hi Alan. Hi Rene, how are you doing? Hi well. Nice to see you again, and uh, nice to see you, Pedro, Lucian, uh, my friends, huh? Very good. And nice to see uh, Diego. Uh, great, big friend in my life, huh? Lifetime, okay? I, I love you, yes. Uh, I, I have a, a, a little bit comment, Lucian, is, is I don't know what is, what is the, is the real reflection of the tra trapezium scaffold. I don't know, is the, it's real. I think that is is only a, a, the image of the CT scan is image is a little bit research. I don't know if it's the real. I think that is the the not immobilization in four weeks for my patient. It, this is my patient. I is a, a, I have I have the the, the all all answers for the the, the the case, and I I think that is not is not reabsorption real. Okay. I agree with you. Uh, I think also it's an uh, artifact of the of the yes. of the CT yeah. scan. Um, we have a, a question from the from the chat. They they ask you to put the CT scan again yes. so we can discuss on it. And uh, just we have uh, uh, please uh, Lucian. I, I I we have Pedro that got to comment. And after yeah, 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 the, que absolutely. the question the questions from the chat, I see there we have two questions. Pedro. No, no. So it's only a consideration because. Sorry, is yes. Uh, it's, it's, yes, it's true that it's a not frequent association as a fracture of a trapezium and the scaphoid. Okay, um, in fact, this is not the real problem because uh, I, according to 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 Diego, that uh, probably uh, it's not true what is the, the the injury. Okay, but in now I think that it doesn't matter because. It's mandatory to reconstruct with surgery what to scaphoid and trapezium. Um, probably the most if you have a bone gap, a bone gap, sorry, uh, you need to uh, add to the surgery uh, bone grafting. But in fact, it is no, not important. The most important is that you have two fracture or two delayed fracture or non unions. In this case, you need to treat what to. This is my opinion. Uh, what exactly do you do with open approach or? Uh, mini invasive approach or using arthroscopy? This is the question, all the more. Thank you, uh, Pedro. Uh, so, uh, Lucien, we have some questions please, or from yeah, the, the chat. Uh, Javier uh, Gouffier uh, uh, wanted to know if you consider the fractures as uh, displaced or uh, instable. And if you think there is uh, some other disease associated, maybe because he saw the the bone absorption in the CT scan. So, Paula, can you can you say something for him? Paula or Rene? Yeah, as a primary option, I don't think um, this patient 
has a um, biology problem. Remember that he's 23 year old, he's a um, young man. And um, I don't think there is a huge displacement either. I think it's very minimal. If I just I can make uh, just a short comments uh, that this kind of fracture are very rare, and uh, we know uh, there are secondary to high trauma, uh, to high energy trauma, uh, and uh, it's not. Uh, I, I think he's a young patient. We don't need to think about uh, an, uh, another disease in uh, these patients. Sorry. Maybe maybe in, in the trapezium uh, we have a, a, a intraosseous ganglion uh, and maybe uh, it is the, the previous previous uh, for the patient and maybe the fracture uh, of the of the ganglion. No, I don't know. You think there there there, there was a, a previous ganglion in the trapezium? Yes. Okay. Uh, who knows? But uh, I think is uh, I don't know the other uh, panelists' opinion. I think it's not so frequent to have uh, a cyst in the trapezium, and uh, we had this uh, high trauma, uh, high energy trauma. But uh, uh, anyone who could uh, would would like to make a comment on uh, the cyst about this uh, uh, reabsorption on the maybe Rene, what was your no, what did I, you do I, you think? I uh, is the possibility my, my concern my concern in this case I, I I totally agree with with Pedro is what is the, the, the final treatment I think that the, the patient don't uh, doesn't have of the of the cyst in the trapezium or the cyst in the in the scaphoid bone uh, my my concern is the in, in, the, in this moment my thought is what is the associated injuries in this case? This is my problem. The high, uh, the high level energy in the in the axial trauma of the of the fan. What is the the problem? Is the trapezium or the ligaments or the scaphoid? Only trapezium, only scaphoid. This is the problem. Um, uh, Paula comments. What, what is the what is the the ideal treatment in this case? Uh, I, I think that in, in the evolution of the the treatment in in the my patient, you you. You can see what is the the, the, the thought in the in, in the final treatment, okay? And uh, uh, so, sorry, uh, Rene, uh, what makes just for our attendees, in your opinion, in this kind of double fracture, what makes this fracture particularly unstable? Because uh, we have a kind of uh, ah. scapotrapezial float, floating joint, or what do you think about this uh, kind of uh, uh, double fracture? I, I think that my my aim in in the scaphoid, I uh, we can see we can see of the 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 little bit deformity in humback, uh, little bit deformity, and in, in open in the dorsal part of the scaphoid, and the trapezium. I see the the uh, it's not a, a step and open of the fracture in in the the uh, several several views. Uh, on the CT scan, I, my my uh, first treatment or my first uh, concern is the scaphoid. Where is the the deformity of the scaphoid? I think that that is the, the first part of the, my treatment. Uh, in, in this moment, I think this uh, this the the treatment is option. And when in the second part, the trapezium is the 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 the, the final treatment of the ligament or. So we focus mm -hmm. on the, the scaphoid for you. Thank you. My, uh, this is my focus. My focus. The, hmm? Thank you, Rene. We have also uh, Gustavo Gomez. Hey, hi, Gustavo. Hi, hi. Hello to everybody. Nice to see you again. Nice to see you too. Well, uh, I, I think arthroscopy is mandatory right now because we um, perhaps we are <clears throat> we are thinking in a high energy trauma. And perhaps we are thinking we may have or not some reabsorption of the bone. Perhaps we are having a bone defect or not. Uh, but we have to see if we have a displacement, if we have an uh, instability of the fracture, if we have a bone reabsorption or not. And uh, we have to check to, I think, uh, the ligaments. 
So I think that with artroscopy, we can evaluate everything. We can uh, access both fractures. We can use the mid-carpal portals and we can use to the STT portals. So uh, perhaps in this case, to evaluate the fracture of the trapezium, we can use the radial mid-carpal portal. And when we arise the, the scope, we can see from below the the fracture of the trapezium is 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 very easy in these cases. Thank you. Uh, we have another Please. question from the chat. Yes. Philip Matthew uh, is uh, asking if is is saying that uh, pachyostopony uh, is not normal for a young man. Um, he's asking is he, uh, was he immobilized for a long period before uh, the presentation. And uh, he is asking if an MRI will uh, help us to rule out uh, another uh, pathology underlying. Maybe Rene or, or Paula for uh, the immobilization before. Dr. Fakira? So the patient did have, did, did have all the, the immobilization for weeks, uh, minimal immobilization with. In, the, the, uh, the uh, no cast, no no uh, minimal immobilization when when the artist is no no. I I I I think the the patient is normal patient. This is a, a sport um, a activities works. The the problem is just, I think that is the the in in the four weeks patient mobilization the nor normal mobilization of the of the your hand, no, no, it's no problem of the osteopenia. Hmm? Thank you, yeah, uh, Paula. That's it. That this this guy was a, a young man, as Doctor Jorquera said. And <clears throat> after the accident, this this injury was neglected. That was it. So he didn't have um, any immobilization. <clears throat> and now, uh, beside the fractures, as Doctor Gomez and Doctor Jorquera said. Uh, would anyone like to rule out associated injuries, like ligament injuries? For example, transscaphoid perilinate injuries, or maybe uh, radioaxial instability of the carpus that usually presents with a um, concomitant subluxation at the base of the thumb. Thank you, Paola, of course. Uh, just before uh, you go on with your case, I would like to share with you the, the results of the polls. Uh, we have 42% uh, of uh, the attendees who would choose as a preferred treatment and a uh, simple immobilization for both scaphoid and trapezium. So it's very interesting. Uh, nobody uh, voted for the fixation only of uh, the trapezium. 42% for uh, voted for uh, fixation only for the scaphoid and 17% uh, uh, for the fixation for both scaphoid and trapezium. So uh, thank you everyone for voting. And Paula, I think we can, uh, uh, you can uh, go on with the case. Thank you. All right, so we're gonna start um, with the trapezium. We just said that the trapezium fracture was a worker type four classification, uh, which is a vertical fracture and the most common one. And also it has um, 1.8 millimeter of uh, step off at the SCT joint. So with this, in this case, we decide to do a reduction and peritoneal fixation of the trapezium with a truscopy assistance using KYO first and then a headless compression screw. This maneuver allows us to improve the joint congruence of the proximal articular phase, achieving absolute stability. Using the classical CNC portal of the base of the thumb for a small donor truscopy, we evaluate the joint identifying uh, fracture line um, and the presence of hemorrhagic changes. We achieve anatomical reduction in the scope and we stabilize the fracture with the help uh, of a K wire. And then we pass the headlet compression screw for absolute stability. These are, these are the, the final x ray um, intra op. Uh, of the fixation of the trapezium. And now, what do we do with the scaphoid? Yes, 
anyone wants to comment. I think we can ask uh, some of our, uh, I can see we have uh, Mort, Hanifa, or Javier uh, Sanchez, ça va? So, sorry, Javier. Just, 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 sorry, Alam, just a little comment. In this yes? coronal view, if you pay attention to the trapezoid, uh, to the trapezium, you can see the line fracture, but there's not a lot of bone resorption in this cut. So maybe that, that bone resorption that everyone is talking about and, and, and talking really? about the biology of the patient, it's not really like a big thing because it's only in one cut. So now you can see that it, 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 it has like a normal bone marrow. Hmm? Exactly, exactly. Uh, thank you. Mart or Javier, who would like to... Uh... Mart, uh, we, we can hear you, how are you doing? Fine. I think uh, uh, there is a humpback uh, deformity over the trapoid from the lateral view. And there is opening of the uh, part of the trapoid. So what would be uh, your uh, management now after we, the... I, after we do the trapoid, the humpback deformity, and we have to reduce the scapulonary angle uh, to be in between uh, 30 to 70 degrees. And also from the arthroscopic, uh, we can look for scapulonary joint and lunar surface joint and also reduce the trapezium and reduce the uh, STP joint also. So for the fusion, uh, what would you do for to fix? Uh, Headless compression screw. If not stable, we can put a uh, wire together for better rotational stability. Okay. Thank you for your comments. Maybe Javier, you wanted to say something? Yes. Hello, everybody. Uh, Hi. I want to agree that uh, in the case that we have two fractures, a trapezium and scaffold fracture, if we stabilize the trapezium fracture with a surgery technique, uh, with good immobilization and with orif, uh, then the scaffold must be treated in the same way uh, because the pattern and the fracture is uh, it's important that uh, the movement and the rehabilitation uh, treatment and, and the rehabilitation options uh, must be taken in account, into account, uh, in your post-operative period. And one thing more, uh, this patient have uh, already like six weeks of evolution. So if we haven't uh, any sign of consolidation of the, of the uh, scaffold, we need to think about uh, scaffold non-union be, because of the time of, of, of because the period of, 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 the, of the scaffold fracture, and the instability pattern of the, the scaffold, not only if there is some, some displacement of DC deformity, et cetera. Uh, if you have uh, this time of period, and uh, if you haven't uh, any time, any kind of, of immobilization in the, in the previous period, you need to uh, stabilize this uh, fracture now. And with six uh, weeks of, of displacement and, and non-immobilization, I think that uh, you need to uh, put in, in some way the, uh, a maximum stabilization, a, a better immobilization, and, or if try to do it better. Thank you, Javier. Do you think uh, someone you or someone uh, would advise uh, a graft here or uh, for the compression, René or Javier? If was your case, did you think about uh, a graft at this stage? Yes, I think that graft uh, may be necessary, but uh, in the in be, before the 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 surgery, we only have the the CT scan to to help us to take a decision. I think that with our proscopy, we can see if you have some uh, bone resorption or soul cyst and this you in this way you can take a, a better decision so i think that arthroscopy would be mandatory to take a, a decision like that 
Thank you, uh, Javier. I would like to ask uh, other maybe panelists uh, uh, for their opinion. I can see we have, uh, do you please? Hi. Hello. Hello. Thank you for, <laughs> thank you for connecting. Okay, thank you. Uh, as for the scaphoid fracture, uh, it, I think it's been uh, six weeks to eight, eight weeks. And uh, although there is a, a absorption in the center of the scaphoid, but still there is a cortical share is uh, quite uh, remaining. So in, in my mind, I, I, I will just uh, don't do the bone grafts for this type of uh, fracture. But one, my concern is that it still has a little bit of a humpback deformity. So uh, to correct this deformity, I just uh, take the wrist out uh, from the uh, distractor and uh, using ex extended position to reduce, uh, try to re reduce the humpback deformity uh, from the distal to proximally, I, I would uh, put screw in without any bone grabs. That is my opinion. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, if nobody else uh, uh, wants to make a comment, maybe uh, we can uh, go on with the case, uh, Paula, and see what you decided to do with Rene. Yeah, we can continue. Well, I agree with uh, all that you have said, right? So this is not a very controversial case. We know that the, for optimal results um, and bone healing, we must achieve an anatomical reduction make that uh, maneuver to uh, fix the, the handbag deformity and provide maximum stability while respecting the biology of the factor. I don't think we need a graph here um, if, we, um, if we follow this uh, step. So uh, there are multiple classifications. This patient had a waste factor and for this type of factor, uh, both approaches uh, have shown good results. We perform an arthroscopy starting with a, a radiocarpal joint from three, four porta. Uh, you can see a bulging and hemorrhagic uh, scaphalonate ligament, as you see there. Therefore, the position of the proximal fragment of the scaffold is correcting using a Lynch high maneuver, placing a, a K wire from the radius to the, the lunate bone. Then, once the reduction of the proximal fragment has been done, we perform a mid carpal arthroscopy to assess the scaphoid fragments and evaluate rotation. We identify the fracture line, as you can see there. However, a gray hyperemia is not visualized since a month has passed since the initial injury. And the arthroscopy uh, guidance, we place a, a retrograde K wire verifying uh, a correct reduction. And then we evaluate the absent of rotation by a trustee, and final fixation is made with a retrograde cannulated screw perpendicular uh, to the fracture line. So we then confirm a correct reduction and screw placement with no rotation. Tinovectomy is performed to clean the joint space. And finally, once the scaffold fracture is established, we then evaluate the presence of associated lesions to rule out. Um, as Dr. Jorquera said, uh, axial instability of the carpus or perilinate injury, as you can see in the video. These are the final x ray of uh, the intra intraoscopy. And these are the post op x ray. And this, these are the CT scan, the sagittal coronal view and the axial view. And then you can see the trapezium. And this is a patient um, two months plus off showing bone healing of the scaphoid and the trapezium. Then you can see the, the good uh, placement of the, uh, of the implant. Both, uh, both fracture has uh, bone healing. Um, with a, a optimal result. So um, the take home message, arthroscopy is a useful tool for the diagnosis and treatment of the scaphoid fracture. CT scan is useful to assess the displacement and stability of the fracture. 
um, we should aim uh, to obtain maximum stability. Um, and this can be achieved with a, a screws or K wire. And always look for associated uh, lesions and rule out pattern of, of uh, instability. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Pat, for this uh, uh, case and congratulations for the, the results. It's, uh, perfect. Could you uh, please stop sharing your screen for, so we can uh, conclude the case? Yeah, sure. Thank you. Uh, Lucien, do we have any questions from the chat, please? Uh, no. The, the case is fulfilled. Uh, actually, I have just a, a short question about the Linshine maneuver and uh, the reduction of uh, the scale weight. You uh, check for René or Pedro or anyone, do you check uh, in the chronology, do you check the scale rene stability before? Because uh, the Linshine maneuver, do you think it, it, it doesn't work if uh, there is an associated uh, scaffoldinate uh, instability to reduce the scaffold. What do you think about this? I see yeah, Pedro. Yes, we, uh, we, we check. Uh, Pedro or René. Oh, sorry, René. Uh, we, we check uh, after the reduction, <laughs> we, we check all the ligaments also. Uh, but uh, it's not usual to have, uh, 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 because this, this, this patient is not clear because probably it's a delayed fracture. But uh, it is not common to have a non-union and, and ligament uh, injury associated. But in this case, it's more common if it's a high injury uh, fracture. And probably uh, it could be uh, it's so important to check. But of course, if you, if you find any, any ligament rupture, uh, you need to, to repair. In this case, probably a, a resection with an anchor or, or a dorsal capsuloplasty, it could be fine. But in this case, I think it's not necessary to do. Yeah. Congress for, for the case because it's a great case because it's not common to have the both uh, injuries are of course uh, the most pro the, 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 the most co the most important for this case is to to learn that be sure that you have like x-ray uh, it's so important to uh, to explore the patient because uh, if your patient have after one month uh, injury uh, have pain in in, in in his ribs in his ribs sorry probably you have a, a something like in inside that you 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 didn't see uh, by now it's so important to check we have mri of a ct scan in this type of cases one because i think this is a great case thank you thank you pedro one uh, last comments i i totally agree with pedro i think that is this the most important comment is to learn what is the 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 option of the treatment when the uh, see of the 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 very good of the CT scan, X-ray, and MRI, and the most important is the the arthroscopic uh, assistant by, uh, to assist of the the associate injury in this case. This is my concern. What is the? I, I don't know what is the associate injury in the in this case when I when I see the the X-ray and MRI and CT scan. I think that is radial axial compromise or peroneal compromise. I don't know. And the, the answer to your question, Alon, is previous to fixation of the radial nade or put of the radial nade uh, 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 key wire, uh, I, I, I evaluate always, I evaluate the, 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 the scaphalonate and the dick and the uh, lunotricuretal ligament. Okay? Yeah. When in the, in the second part, when I put the key wire under the fixation of the radial nade and uh, correction of the deformity, and um, put of the screw inside to the scaphoid. Uh, again, evaluate of the scaphoid ligament in the bolar and, uh, and dorsal part and dick and lunoticular ligament. This is my my uh, my uh, uh, stage on, uh, or step in the in the in the surgery. Hmm? Before and after. Thank you so much, uh, Rene. Uh, I think if you don't have any other comments from the panelists, I see nobody. Uh, has a comment, so uh, we can move, I think, uh, to the uh, next case. Thank you, Paula. Thank you, René, and everyone for uh, the comments. And uh, it's a very nice case. So uh, now we can move to Diego Conqueras and Pedro Delgado for a very interesting case. Uh, Diego, if you are ready, please, uh, uh, could you share your screen? OK.
you can see. Yes, perfectly. Thank you. Let me. Okay. Hello, everyone. I'm Diego Junqueras, and I come from Chile. But the last few months, I have been doing my fellowship in Madrid with Pedro's team, Pedro Delgado's team. It's a pleasure to share with you this clear case to the, the failure of a scaffolded ligamentoplasty. This is a 49 years old male, right handed. He had a low demanding job, but a high level sports activity because he practiced uh, Thai boxing. The patient came uh, in 2022 for a medical revision because he had a wrist pain for about three months without any trauma. The range of motion were acceptable, but uh, he described an important limitation because of dorsal wrist pain with a positive Watson and Balotman scaphalunate test. Here we have the pre-op X-ray uh, where we can observe a slight increase in the scaphalunate space. On the lateral view, maybe a little scaphoid flexion without a significant extension of the lunate. And in the dynamic X-ray on the right, we don't see a significant increase in the scaphoid joint and the rest of the carpus. The results of the MRI showed uh, the complete lesion of the scaphoid ligament without involvement in other ligaments and, art and articular cartilage. So after a failure to the initial treatment, the patient was recommended to a surgery. A uh, wrist arthroscopy was performed where a complete tear Geisler 4 of the scaphoid ligament was observed with its remaining tissue and a positive drive-through sign. So in these cases, the last years, our team has been performed an arthroscopic uh, three, 300, 360 internal brace technique without a tendon graft. This technique includes two bones tunnels, suture tape, and two biotenodesis screws, as you can see in the picture. This is a schematic representation of the technique applied on plastic bone models, the dorsal and polar view. And this is the arthroscopic view. Uh, then when the 2.5 millimeter bone tunnels are prepared and secured with the red cannulas, uh, we added an additional passage through the dorsal capsule with the suture lasso. Then the suture tape is passed through both tunnels, the dorsal capsule and fixation with both biotenodesis screws. And finally, the 360 closure is complete with a knot on the polar capsule. This is, a, this is a, um, the rehabilitation protocol that we apply to our patient described by Fernando Corella in 2017 with the use of power wall since the sixth week. But unfortunately- Diego, this... Diego sorry, I will, yes. uh, <laughs> excuse me. If you allow me just, if you come, can come back uh, just a little to the to the first case uh, because maybe okay. we have some questions or some uh, comments. Perfect. Uh, to add, so it, it was, if you can go just go back two or three slides uh, before. Um, Lucian, or do you have something from uh, the from the, the chats? No, not yet. Not okay, yet. because uh, and do we have any uh, comments from the panelists? No, because I, I have just a question here uh, about uh, the. Um, about the stage of uh, the the EWAS, uh arthroscopic stage, and uh, how you decided? Uh, can you help us? How you decided to uh, to indicate uh, this uh, technique, the gametoplastic technique? Why did you choose this technique here? Intraoperatively, before or maybe Pedro? Yes. Yes, you're asking about the, what is the exactly the, the indication. The indication, yes. The first one is we need to have a symptomatic patient. Uh, if you have any any symptom, uh, symptom sorry, uh, our opinion is that no, no before any surgery, but the patient is still fa is still bad uh, with uh, less horizontal motion and with uh, signs of uh, pain in the dorsal area. And this the, the explanation is uh, uh, with a Watson test positive uh, and a, a crank test positive. Uh, 
Um, the ORI and X-ray exams are fine, uh, are compatible with, uh, with the diagnosis of scaphoid injury. And during the arthroscopy, also we check it. And in this case, we have a Gessler type 4, okay, or I was type 4, with no, no, so important, with no uh, um, uh, chondral injuries associated. In this situation, you, you, you can choose between the open ligamentoplasty or arthroscopic ligamentoplasty using a tendon graft or tendon graft with internal base associated, or in this case, we trade as Gustavo with only an internal base we have, because we have a great experience with this type of technique and it's, uh, now is uh, our main technique for this type of cases. But probably many of the, of the panelists are also many of the participants have another opinion. Thank you, uh, Pedro, because uh... Uh, it was the decision you you make here is a very uh, very interesting to 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 understand your you make your decision intraoperatively for a ligament aplasty instead of for example an uh, arthroscopic capsular ligament repair because the uh, the clinical assessment before is not so bad and uh, so it is arthroscopic decision Yes, in this case, on all cases, uh, the most important for us is the first one, exploration. And second one, arthroscopy. MRI, XRI, yes, it's fine. It's, they are needed, but it's not most important. Because yes. we, we check, um, we compare our findings, arthroscopic, arthroscopic findings with our uh, exploration. And probably it's so close, it's uh, so similar. Okay, so we have the clinical assessment, the history, and... Uh... Uh, maybe we, uh, we we use a little the X-rays and secondary MRI. That's the arthroscopy is very important. Thank you, yeah. uh, Pedro. Gustavo, I think Gustavo has something to say. <laughs> He's, uh... Oh yeah, yeah. I, I I totally agree with Pedro in all he said. But I I, I want to see something. Can you go, uh, Diego, to the previous slide, please, to the X-ray? Okay, here. If you see the x-ray of the left of the screen, you can see that perhaps we are having some uh, instability of the lunate because the lunate it's, uh, with, it's uncovered uh, a little bit more than we are used, uh, used to see it. So I, I want to ask to Pedro, to Lucian, to Alam and to René, what uh, importance do you give when you see that the lunate is going out of the radius? Because as you all know, for example, in, in, in Kaplan Institute, uh, Mireya, for example, give a lot of uh, importance to this. And they talk about the instability of the instability of the lunate and they change the the technique of the reconstruction because of this do you give some importance to this uh pedro lucian alam rene what, what whoever want to answer thank you all yes gustavo i agree with you because you uh, i i know that what you want to what do you say now because it's it's true uh, uh, and also uh but the patients said no because uh, i have symptoms only the 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 three three months ago but you have uh, another uh, injury in your wrist uh, many years uh, before. No, 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 uh, uh, no, no. Only, only I have pain uh, with the sports during the last three, four months. Okay, but the X-ray uh, explains something different, as you, as you said, and also the exploration. But in fact, we need to check it during the surgery because uh, in many cases, in all cases, we explain to the patient we are going to perform first an arthroscopy and then we are going to 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 check if we see if the the ligament is needed because you have chondral injury or you have a uh, start association it's impossible to reconstruct okay or probably it's not mandatory to reconstruct and it probably uh, for us uh, one case for every every four every 14 uh, is possible this situation but in this case uh, because we have some respect for this case especially with the x-ray uh, uh, but the 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 the, the arthroscopic uh, findings. Sorry, because we don't have it. Okay, uh, the 
they are fine with no contract injury, with a so simple reduction of the reduction of the, the of the deformity in like a normal classical typical case. But yeah. pro, you are going to 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 see that it's not true. Okay. Thank you, uh, Pedro. We have uh, René. Uh... Like to yes. add a comment. In, in this, I, I have a little, little comment uh, in the same line of the Pedro and Gustavo. I think that well, the, when I see in the X ray of the minimal or little bit ulnar translation, is uh, my concern. Um, uh, Diego, do you, uh, do you have uh, the, 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 the X ray in the, in the, uh, the other, other wrist or the? Uh, no, the, no, we the, don't. The have patient, it. No, no. This is a, is, is a one possibility. Also, when, when we have a, a bilateral uh, X rays, we, we see uh, the, ulnar, the normal ulnar translation of the, the, this patient is, is perfect. Um, check. My, my, my opinion is, is, the, is the same treatment. Okay, uh, when, when I check with the arthroscopy, uh, I, in, in this moment, I this. I, I want to decide the way, what is the, 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 the treatment of reconstruction, uh, reconstruction of the right lunate ligament of the, the, the second stability size of the, the, the carpal. Hmm? René, uh, do, would you have any indication, you here in uh, uh, this case, for uh, the, the, a large capsulidesis, for example, uh, retentioning the DIC? You, yeah, I know Pedro. The, 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 the pain, what is, what is the, my, my, the arthroscopy. When I see when I see of the instability on the bolar part, dorsal part, or, or compromise of the dick and dorsal intercapital ligament, uh, compromise on the open on the space on the interval of the scapulonate with the optical, uh, I think that with the reconstruction is the, is better. And uh, I think that the, the, when when you have a, a compromise of the bolar part and dorsal part and no compromise of the the dick. The, the capsule of this is, is very good, very good option of the treatment. Okay. And uh, when, when, yes. when you don't, uh, sorry. Hmm? Yes, thank you. But uh, this is a discussion we have uh, uh, very frequently because uh, uh, when there is a confirmation of the, the IC here is uh, uh, are the, the indication we have for all the modified. Uh, uh, capsulodesis, uh, the Montovani capsulodesis, uh, the, ma the modified medulla, uh, because we, we, we retention. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, Gustavo Montovani can't be here today. And uh, so you don't believe in uh, this case, you or Pedro, you, you absolutely don't believe that we can use a modified capsulodesis by a, a large retentioning of the DIC? For me, is the question? Yeah, Pedro or Rene. Uh, I know. Yes. Mm. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Sorry, sorry, but in the last, the, the last course, uh, Santiago Ruiz's course, I, I, uh, I saw the technique of the, 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 the Gustavo and the Supper Capsule Capsuloplasty. This is the name, Supper Capsule. Um, I, I see in the time of the, what is the result is your technique and. The, the the indication of the suburb cost of lefty of the Manchavani is uh, type one, two, three, and four. Okay. Three, I, four. I like the uh, I like of the 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 uh, ligamento plasti. Uh, uh, still I, I like the, the, the ligamento plasti and I, I don't know what is the result in the time of the super cup support cup solar plasti. I, I think that this very good technique and I don't know what is the result in the time. I, I I want to I want to see in in two two years on four years. Yes. Uh, I I saw I saw what is the result of the the, the stuff of the the capsuloplasty in the time. Mm -hmm. I agree. Of the Pedro. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, I think that the, in my opinion, because it's uh, it's only my opinion, because uh, there are many cases cited with a type four with a classical technique of Matulang. With a great results at the last report that was prepared by 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 Lorenzo Bellini, uh, but for me the dorsal capsulodesis or bolar capsulodesis is for uh, simplest ligaments uh, lig ligament here. For example, for type uh, for type four, type two, or type three A or three B. Mm, probably you have a type four. Uh, I, probably I need to reconstruct with something. And also our technique is a ligamentoplasty. 
with a capsule of acid added because uh, in fact the ligament is reconstructed with with uh, with the with the fibers but the biology was supported with the capsule because we trap we pass the 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 sutur, sutur lasso or sorry the the fiber tape or the sutur tape under or across the the capsule because also it's a combined technique with a ligament reconstruction and capsule adhesive, capsule adhesive reconstruction but only a capsule adhesive for type 4 for me is not the main indication but it's true there are many techniques as gustavo as christophe anyone that was uh, perfect with a great result but for me i think that you have a type 4 or so close than this one because it's a great uh, injury around this 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 ligament uh, injury uh, you need support anything more like a ligament it's only my yeah. opinion Thank you, Pedro. I was just asking this question because I use a technique uh, very close to uh, the technique of Gustavo Montovani and uh, retentioning the 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 IC or uh, reliever the large. No, it's not really a capsule. This is uh, finally it's uh, really retentioning with two uh, two divergent sutures. Um, it gives uh, for the moment good results, uh, but I uh, it is uh, the, the discussion you have all the time. But I agree with Rene Jorquera. We need. Uh, uh, long follow up really to uh, uh, to to conclude. Uh, thank you, uh, Pedro. I, I see we have first Lucien and after Lorenzo, uh, they have uh, comments. Uh, please, Lucien. So um, regarding what Gustavo uh, asked, I think that um, uh, ulnar translation is is an important issue, and uh, in the choice of the treatment. We should exclude the uh, deficiency of the radio lunet uh, ligaments, and um, in that case, uh, I I would perform uh, um, arthroscopic uh, spiral uh, tenodesis, like uh, and that's a uh, tartas, and uh, it, it will um, avoid the, the ulnar translation of the of the carpus. So in in that specific case, I would change my 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 treatment. Thank you, uh, Lucian. Lorenzo. Hello, Lorenzo. We Hi, can hear everyone. you. Yeah. Hi, everyone. Hi. Um, yeah, I just wanted to say, I can agree with everyone here, but uh, um, it's a discussion indeed that we have very frequently, but in my in my hands, in my experience, uh, especially in my, uh, with the recent modification of the technique, we, we find that the main uh, limitation for good results with the what we call the soft tissue repair with the uh, capsule disease or capsuloplasty or whatever is mainly in our results if you have a significant uh, deformation of the bone preoperatively. Uh, if you have a scaphoid flexion or a significant disease, that might be the, the, the number one cause for uh, unsatisfactory results uh, post operative uh, because it's quite hard to correct the position of the bone with the soft tissue repair, uh, whereas the main advantage of for a ligamentoplasty for reconstruction is that if you do your uh, bone tunnel correctly, then with the tension of the graft or the or the tape or whatever, you can correct the, the position of the bone. So in that specific case, the scaffold unit angle is quite close here. Uh, it might almost be 80 to 90 degrees. So maybe I would be perhaps uh, cautious with a simple soft tissue uh, capsule disease, uh, or maybe a, a very strong modified one, including also some part of the uh, ulnar uh, extrinsic capsule and very radial to have a very strong application. But in that case, maybe because of the scaphoid flexion, I would go for a reconstruction, arthroscopic right. reconstruction. So reconstruction for, thank you, Lorenzo, reconstruction for Lorenzo. We have uh, René, you would like to make another comment? Yes, uh, only, only question for uh, Pedro or Diego. Uh, what is the position of the, the, the scaffold in, in the flexion and subluxation? For me, the, this is the most important situation in, in the, the scaffold made here. Uh, where is the, the position of this, the scaffold? Well, when we have a, a ballotment and Watson test pos, a positive, uh, we have a, a uh, normal solution of in the dorsal part of the, the, the scaffold okay. with res respect of the, the radial. Mm -hmm. 
what is the position? I, I don't see it in the in the X-ray. Hmm? There is no uh, there is no uh, real. Uh, I can understand, Rene. You are talking about asking about uh, the dorsal scaphoid translation, the pre-op dorsal scaphoid translation. That is not very important on uh, the X-ray we have. Maybe Diego, you can uh, show us other. Yes. Uh, in the MRI, we don't see the uh, scaphoid dorsal subluxation. Uh, I, uh, uh, no, uh, we don't have it in in this slide, but uh, in this case, pre-op, we don't have a dorsal subluxation of the scaphoid. Yeah, so uh, it is uh, okay. Uh, thank you, uh, everyone, for the comments. I think uh, Diego, we can uh, can go on with the case. Thank you. So. Unfortunately, this patient didn't have a, a good evolution uh, in the fifth post-operative month, uh, despite um, sorry. sorry. Uh, take take your time. Uh, yes, uh, <laughs> sorry. Um, the patient reported a significant wrist pain and a clicking sensation of the of the ulnar side. And in the in the control X-ray, uh, radiological control, we found an opening space between the radial and the steel and the scaphoid, because uh, like uh, Gustavo said before. A, an ulnar translation of the lunate in relation to the radiolunate facet. And in the lateral x-ray, we don't see any volar subluxation of the radiocarpal joint. However, the scaffold flexion persists. In the same findings were maintained in the CT study, but we can see an increase in the DC deformity uh, without the scaphoid uh, dorsal subluxation, like you can see in the, in the middle of the, the screen. So, the treatment options in this case, uh, we will discuss or I continue. I think we can uh, discuss, uh, maybe just to take one or two uh, comments. I saw uh, Gustavo Gomez wanted hey. to uh, to tell something, oh, or Paula. I see, sorry, Diego, well, um, interesting case. Uh, thank you for sharing. Uh, how, how is the, the state of the cartilage? It's good. Yeah. The cartilage. You see the CT good. scan, the the mm. the joint between the capital and the lunate. It doesn't seem quite. <coughs> no. Um, we, you know, at have... the very dorsal part of the mm -hmm. uh, scaphoid with the capital, it doesn't seem all right. Um, Where? But it, it the 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 mid carpal joint. Mm -hmm. No, the mid carpal joint is good. Right. In in the in the arthroscopy. The, the most strange uh, situation in this in this case is that the the the, the first like, X-ray are not clear, okay, as you can see. Uh, the the examination is final, very very simple, okay. Uh, and during the surgery, we have some subject or uh, suspects of the pulvi could be increased the, the grade, but the chondral surface is perfect. It's very easy to 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 reduce and no special thing that the, that you can find to change your, your treatment uh but the evolution was very the follow-up was very bad because you can see that have a great increased space between the scaphoid and lunate a great translation ulna translation of the of the of the, uh, the uh, lunate uh, and the rest of the bones and also uh, a rare space between between the mid carpal joint well in this case, we, we have a great trouble. <clears throat> the, pain, the, the patient is still bad uh, with a lot of pain. It's not a normal evolution with uh, a, a, a scaphoid uh, dissociation reconstruction. And what do you do in this case? Because for us, it was so difficult to, hey. to, to choose the, the, the final treatment. Pedro, uh, I think Gustavo the, Gomez. Sorry, 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 no sorry, Alam. Go, Pedro, go do, do you do you remember the state of the long radiolunate ligament uh, at the first surgery? To, um, it it was intact or it or it was a. Uh, 
sorry, because uh, we, we don't check it because it was so very, very clear during the surgery in a typical yeah, I, oh, yeah. without any problem. No special yeah. time to, to suspect anyone. Because, uh, the, okay. Pedro, how did you... Uh, ah, sorry, Pedro, uh, what, because there is an obvious worsening, a very rapid... Uh, it, it worsened very rapidly for uh, the scaphedonate phase. Did you have uh, any hypothesis at the moment? What, sorry? Any? For the worsening, for the worsening of the yes. instability at five months after the first surgery, did you have any hypothesis? Because it's... Uh, no, yeah. because no. it's the only one, the only patient. Uh, probably now, uh, when we prepare the, our first ligamentoplasty using arthroscopy, uh, probably eight, uh, eight years ago, uh, it is the only one, the only patient we have this type of evolution, with this bad evolution, the worst evolution that we have with any patient treated with this type of technique. It, in, independent that uh, ligament, ligament with uh, internal brace, no internal brace, etc. The only one. But for us, what was so important to check again the previous X-ray, the previous examination, because probably something was wrong, uh, were wrong in, in, in the origin, in the, in the initial evolution, initial exploration. In the initial, yeah. That is a young patient with uh, uh, martial arts uh, uh, practice. Uh, probably we, we asked to the patient, but you never have any pain in the past? No, 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 never, never. I, I'm still fine all the time. Wow. Uh, we're not sure what exactly would happen. Probably it was an increased rate of instability. It's not a type four. We could check the 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 we, we mind the the the, the Garcia Elias uh, classification. It's not like a type four. Probably would be more. But the, our question is what's happened exactly because the the carpal the the the, the chondral aspect of the of the joint was fine with no chondral injury. Well, so difficult to 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 choose what is salty, what's happened salty, but the problem is what you, what 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 are going to do in the in the future? What, what are going to do with this this patient? So uh, what to do? Uh, sorry, Pedro. What to do with the patient? We have two, uh, Lucian or Gustavo. Lucian. Uh, I, I I just wanted Gustavo. to ask Pedro. Um, I can understand why the the ulnar uh, deviation deviation of the translation of the carpus continued, but I don't understand why did the gap opened. This 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 thing I don't understand because your technique uh, closes the gap very good. Yes, um, one of the problems is uh, that we 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 in mind is not that that the patient don't have any scapular dislocation. It was another another pattern like a radiocarpal dislocation, un type four, un type two of uh, talesnic uh, situation. But uh, the 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 cartilage the the cartilage was fine. Uh, I'm not sure. We don't know what's happened sadly, but Gustavo, what to... would you do? Ah, uh, sorry, Pedro, I interrupted you. Sorry. No. I well, just uh, see Gustavo Gomez wanted to uh, reply to Pedro Delgado. Yeah, I, I think I totally agree with Pedro and with Lucian. I, I think that here the problem, the main problem we are having is uh, radiocarpal instability. We are having uh, an instability of the lunate. If you see the sagittal uh, uh, cut of the scaphoid, you can see that there is no dorsal subluxation of the scaphoid. And this is because Pedro uh, Pedro could, um, could restore the stability of the scaphoid, but the, uh, the lunate remain unstable. And that's why it, it, it goes to the ulnar side, because I think we have a very big problem with the long radial lunate ligament which is, in my opinion, completely torn. You know, sometimes in the initial X-rays, we can see that there is no space between the radius and the lunate. If you go back, Diego, we can see that in the lateral view, in the X-ray, uh, in the first X-ray. And sometimes this is a sign that the lunate is not above the, the, the radius because it goes next to the radius as you can see on the uh on on the lateral view 
in, in the X-ray. And in the anteroposterior view on the left of the screen, you can see that you have a ulnar translocation of the lunate. This is very rare, but these are the cases that I uh, usually want to go with the fiber tape or the suture tape or the internal brace, as you, you want to name it. I, I always uh, would like to go to the radius, as Lucian uh, Morkovich said, with a, a spiral technique or, or the technique you, you, you want to use it. But I think in these cases, we should reconstruct the, the, the long radiolunate ligament. Thank you, Gustavo. I think you are, you are saying everything before the end of the case. <laughs> so, uh, just uh, <coughs> Lucian, we will take one question after uh, Diego will go on and uh, conclude this case. Lucian, we have uh, one question. Yeah. So, um, um, Paula Ramirez, uh, um, uh, she 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 asked us that. Uh, she, I think we need uh, to have a component uh, long radio ligament in order to do any uh, scaffold ulnar reconstruction and to avoid ulnar translation. And if it's not component, if the ligament is not good, she would do an uh, up layer technique like uh, Rene described. Okay, and also uh, Joe Upili um, agreed with the uh, the ulna translation in this case, and uh, he asked if we have any reliable way to reduce it. I think we can uh, ask. Uh, thank you, Lucian. You can ask uh, Joe Upili to uh, uh, to make a comment, maybe. Do you hear yeah. us? Yeah. Actually, yeah, uh, it's a. I am always uh, struggling to reconstruct the volar side of the scaphalonate, but uh, I always found that uh, long radiolunate is lax uh, during the radiocarpal rhizoscope. I always feel that uh, there's something is happening rather than the radioscope carpet is very taut. So, I, my focus is to reconstruct the the radius. But uh, I totally agree with that. We need to be a stronger uh, construct to uh, tighten up the lunate. Uh, my idea, one idea is that, uh, what about fixation position? Uh, if, if we put uh, like an anchor or, uh, or anchor or uh, interference screw to the lunate and put uh, the suture tape out to the one to poro, what about just uh, putting the wrist position to flexion and honor deviation? It will reduce the DZ deformity and the honor trace, trace location of the lunate more radially and correct. Once this position, then we can put the suture anchor to the one to portal uh, radial uh, styloid area. That might reduce a little bit more uh, <laughs> that is my opinion, but unfortunately, it, uh, in Korea, there is not many uh, static uh, scapulonate instabilities here. You don't, so they, uh, you don't have many of them. Yeah, I don't have many of them. I I have many dynamic conditions, but not many. <laughs> For okay. some reason, a Asian connective tissue is very strong. <laughs> yes, thank you, thank you, Vikram. <laughs> People they go to the uh, to the surgeon very early maybe. Uh, thank you for the, your comments. Um, uh, Diego, could you please uh, just uh, conclude your case and uh... perfect. Thank you. So in this case, we decide to perform a new scaphalunid ligament plasty with reconstruction of the radiocarpal ligaments. Um, so this is our initial vision with a complete opening of the scaphalunid space, uh, Geisler 4, and abundant fibrotic tissue between both bones and the mid-carpal and radiocarpal joints. We perform a resection of all the fibrotic tissue, like you can see, um, as well as release of the palmar and dorsal uh, area of both joints. joints. With shaver, we even resect uh, the remains of previous suture on the dorsal side of the scaphalunate. 
uh, here. So then uh, we try to use the same bone tunnels in the scaphoid and uh, in the lunate. When we were able to reconstruct both tunnels, we still had fibrous tissue to be resected in the dorsal area of both uh, joints. And then we performed the same pseudo lasso pass through the dorsal capsule. And then we keep the suture in this position to allow the passage of the suture tape later. And then in this case, we decide to use a double suture a tape through both tunnels to then tie um, a nice knot uh, to provide reduction, greater resistance and strength. After completing the, res the reduce and resistance scaffolding construct, we fix uh, the double suture on the radial and bolar surface of the radius with a swipe lock um, and reconstructing the radiocarpal ligaments. Uh, after reducing the ulnar translation. And this is our view uh, with the mid-carpal arthroscopic vision, the closed and reduced scaphalunate space transformed into a geyser one. And this is a radio radiological control of the four post-operative week. A patient has recently undergone surgery, so we still had to evaluate his evolution. And this uh, is. I have something that, to comment. Yes. Can I proceed? Okay. Uh, personally, uh, I just uh, don't like the 360 uh, reconstructive technique because uh, to tight. If you want to tighten up the volar space, it will aggravate uh, the pronation of the scaphoid, flexion of the scaphoid a little more. So, uh, and uh, just think about the why the dorsal part of the scaphoid is thicker than the volar side. It's like a pivot point like this. Mm -hmm. It's quite movable. Volar side is quite movable. So why do we need to, do, do you want to, uh, <laughs> tighten up the volar side. That might be a cause of failure. Yes. Um, you, so. Pedro, maybe you, you 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 have an answer to this. Thank you for your comment. For you. Yes, very 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 good question. Uh, the first one. Now, now today, we are not sure should if the patient has uh, scaphoid dislocation, a basic uh, scaphoid dislocation, or a radio radiocarpal dislocation thalasinic type 2. This is the first comment. The second one about reconstruction, uh, about to, to recover the, 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 the flexion of the scaphoid, you need to pull to, 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 the, to, the, to the branch of the, of the first, uh, across the, 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 first, the first bone tunnel across the scaphoid. Uh, after you fix with the, with the, with the first cue. Uh, using this, you can restore the flexion or the, uh, the extension of the scaphoid, and then go pass again to the dorsal aspect of the lunate to the volar aspect across the the bone tunnel. Then pull again of the uh, of the of this uh, fiber tape and put the second one. But in this case, we prepare the same using a special knot because uh, I I ask with this, this patient with Gustavo because I know we know we he has a lot of experience with this type of uh, special suture because in this case we we need to to check to 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 compress perfectly the the, the space between the nate and its scaphoid and then with the rest of the of the knot to reconstruct the, uh, also with the maneuver that uh, we we are talking about. With the maneuver, this was with a uh, ulnar deviation to reconstruct the radiolunate radio uh, ligament using the, the internal base. But now I express again, I say again that it's not sure if the patient has especially uh, uh, a scaphoid dislocation or a radiolunate, radio, radiocarpal uh, dislocation. But we don't know. Yes. Thank you, Pedro. Gustavo, want to, uh, uh, want to answer and after Lorenzo. 
Well, for, first of all, I want to congratulate Diego and Pedro for, for, for bringing us this case because these are the cases from which we learn a lot. And so thank you very much to both Pedro and Diego. And I, I want to say that I, I, I totally agree with the, with the treatment that Pedro uh, used. It's, it's, it seems a, a very nice configuration. I just uh, want to say that in these cases, I don't like to use uh, Corella rehabilitation protocol. I, I like to, to, to keep uh, the mobilization for, uh, uh, um, for much for, for a long time, perhaps between four or six uh, weeks, because it's, it's a different case from a just and um, scaffolding instability. This is a very complex instability. So we have to, to, to trust in the SCAR that it's going to, to, to develop in, in the four or five or six weeks. So if you start to move them at the two weeks after surgery, it may, uh, it may be uh, a, a little bit uh, bad for, for the internal brace and you may have a rupture of the internal brace. So no uh, early mobilization for Gustavo Gomez. Thank uh, you. In, 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 in these cases, I prefer no. not. Thank you, Gustavo. Uh, now, Lorenzo, please. Yeah, I just wanted to say uh, that it, it reminded me uh, a, a very similar case that I had last year. But the luck that I have compared to your situation is it was an acute case, a traumatic case, but the patient have a clear uh, widening scaffolding aid dissociation, but also an acute ulnar uh, translation of the carpus. So when I did the arthroscopy, I assessed everything and I assessed the scaffolding aid. There was a uh, dissociation, of course, but there was also a complete evolution of the volar uh, radiocarpal ligaments. So I think it's in a in rare case, it's sometimes it's lesions that can occur simultaneously, maybe. And probably yours was a chronic uh, cases, but uh, uh, since I did mine in acute condition, I was able to uh, fix the scaffolinate uh, problem, but also I uh, anchored the volar ligament, the, the, the long radiolinate and the radioscaphocapitate ligament back onto the volar rim of the ridges with some anchors. And I prote protected the repair by a, uh, scaf, uh, radio mm -hmm. scaf with uh, K wire for uh, for uh, four weeks, and then the patient was fine. But uh, of course, it's a very uh, very different situation with it's acute. But probably it's a combined lesion, very rare, and um, I think you did uh, you did a very nice uh, repair, chronic repair with the second surgery. But probably we need to assess every ligament when we do a ligament repair, even for a simple scaffolding. It's a uh, 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 problem. Maybe we need to be very scholar and assess everything in the wrist to prevent any uh, uh, undiagnosed ligament problem, radiocarpal dissociation. Thank you, Lorenzo. And we keep in mind the position of the lunate, as uh, uh, we were uh, saying uh, in the beginning with Gustavo. Thank you. Uh, for your case, Lorenzo, it was uh, acute. Uh, how long from the injury, from the trauma? Sorry. It was, it was less than three weeks after the trauma. So. Okay. So... Uh, there is a natural healing of uh, soft tissues. We have now, thank you, Lorenzo. Uh, now we have uh, Lucien, please. We can hear you, Lucien. Pedro, I wanted to ask you if um, you don't think it's it's useful always in, in cases of uh, uh, ligament uh, or uh, or wire reconstruction uh, to to fix the the ligament or the or the tape to the volar radius uh, it won't give you more uh, a more secure uh, reconstruction in your opinion it could be but not now because uh, in our experience with uh, so close to 90 90 patients uh, we have any problem and need to to cross the joint okay to fix it because probably may origin uh, uh, a stiffness but probably after this case also with the experience with that Gustavo Gustavo reports probably it will be a possibility I think so Thank you. We uh, have also some questions from the 
Just Lucien, uh, it's, sorry, we have just Rene comments and after okay. the question. Uh, Rene comments, yes. uh, please, Rene. Congrats, uh, Pedro and Diego. This is uh, it's a very hard patient uh, case and, and um, very, very good final solution you know, the, the, when, when you fix in the in the radial of the the, the last part of the reconstruction is very good. Uh, I, I tomorrow I I I will show the the, the the my my follow up of the three years of the the new reconstruction is the same similar technique of the Gustavo Gomez or the Anafab arthroscopic reconstruction when when I have a, I have two parts and I think that is very very good solution I. I want to see in the, in the, in the time what where, where is the, the result of the patient. I, I think that the, my, my my concern is what is the the location of the scapula is very good. I think that is is very good and the the union of the radio radius and the scapula and the capitain in this case is very good. I think that is the 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 final solution is very well result in the time. Mm -hmm. Congrats, my friends. Thank you, uh, Rene. Lucian, if you can take some questions because we have the, the conclusion of the case, uh, please. Um, uh, Paula Ramirez is asking if we, if you are not fear of uh, osteolysis in the bone tunnels using only suture tape. Uh, no. It's quite a, a big issue in the, in the recent uh, months, also in the in the fashion Rimini. Uh, there was some discussion about it. Pedro, what 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 do you think about it? Yes, uh, when we beginning with this technique, our our personal risk is about what about the, the osteolysis in the future, because you know uh, you are going to put or to fix into a bone tunnel a suture, a great suture, uh, only using a a, a a a screw. But now we're speaking because in every patient we 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 check it uh, uh, every every six months with a CT scan and we compare our uh, patients treated with only internal brace compared with the patient with the tendon and internal brace. And so different. The first one, with you, when you use a tendon graft and internal brace, the use normally the, the bone tunnel is, uh, is, is uh, have a more diameter, like three or 3.5 millimeters. You use only internal brace, all, always is the same, 2.5, no more. And with the evolution, with the follow-up, with the CT scan, we will have any osteolysis uh, only in the entry and in the exit of, uh, of the bone tunnel, but it's less than the patient treated with uh, tendon graft and internal brace. By this condition, we have any problem. We are safe. Uh, we treat with patient with the future with the same uh, technique because now the osteolysis with patient treated with two years ago, there are no osteolysis. It's fine. And we know also that tendons heal to the periosteum and non inside the tunnel, and tendon do, do not do not uh, save you from osteolysis. It's only a myth. No, because I have, uh, I have a the... question. Yes, sorry, uh, Pedro. Uh, so, do you think uh, the size of the the tunnel is more important for prevent osteolysis or the graft no, itself? No, no, I'm not sure. Probably that. Uh, oh. Or no, but if you are going to repeat the surgery like this one, it's, it's not the same using a three three millimeters or three point five millimeters than only two point five, because the it's it's very very easy to have a fracture using this technique. You have a great uh, bone tunnel, but with a minimal bone tunnel, the 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 aggression to the to the or the risk to the to the to the bone is is a minimal minimal risk, but Thank it's you. not only a problem of size, of course. Thank you, uh, everyone. Uh, uh, Diego, are you still with us? Could you please really uh, conclude uh, your do the discussion, please? Yes. Okay. So when uh, Garcia Elias described in 2017 a functional classification of the carpal ligaments, he identified two groups of isodynamic ligaments, antipronation and supination. And the antisupination ligaments are active when the carpus is actually loaded uh, or when the distal row is torqued into a hyperpronation force. Uh, so this ligament, um, this is the spiral antipronation tenodesis described by these authors. Uh, 
where the reconstruction of the antipronation ligands are indicating chronic perilunate instability and in the radiocarpal instability, telisnic type 2. Initially with FCR tendon, but then with uh, uh, ECRL uh, in this publication of CACAR in 2017. Um, this is the pathophysiological evolution of the scaffold lunate dissociation uh, described by Garcia Lias where the stability of the lunate is added uh, between stage four and five by Alex Duke in 2021. Um, the stage four implies that the lunate is stable and the stage five is unstable. So the question is, this injury is just a scaffold lunate dissociation or a radiocarpal instability or a complex instability? That includes both. Okay. As described long ago, telisnic in two types. Uh, on the other hand, uh, the internal brace, the use of high resistance switchers as internal brace uh, has been described in recent years in some studies to increase the mechanical resistance to, of the ligamentoplasty. Uh, this Japanese group described an open technique with the AK series uh, since 2019, all dorsal open reconstruction surgery technique uh, with internal brace augmentation. They describe the surgery technique and preliminary results with a similar and uncomplicated surgery. So, an astro, um, the 360 reconstruction, uh, PC Ho in 2015 described this, uh, his technique with uh, 17 patients uh, with no major complications. Then, Kakar adds to this configuration, this internal brace augmentation, but not open technique. Our experience with 15 patients between 2020 and 2021, all of them with scaphalunate injury, Geisler 3 or 4, with remaining ligament tissue and a reduce, reducible instability without chondral lesions. We did an arthroscopic 360 reconstruction. The scaphalunate uh, angle decreased from uh, 64 uh, grades, a scaphalunate gap from, from uh, 3.8 to 2.3 and this is to a uh, 46% post op So uh, our functional results, uh, an average of follow-up of uh, 12 months with good range of motion and only 6% of positivity in the Watson test. All patients returned to their previous sport activity. And finally, this is a patient of uh, at eight weeks of evolution with very good mobility and no pain. In the X-ray, we have a good alignment of the carpus. And this is an email follow-up after two years of case with tendon and internal brace and another with only internal brace. And we don't have any complication in relation to the bone channels. So thank you. Thank you so much, Diego. Congratulations to you and to Pedro for uh, this uh, very good case and the outcome. Could you please, Diego, Stop sharing okay. your screen so you can conclude. Thank you. Uh, maybe, uh, Pedro, you would like to make a, a very last comment on uh, your case. Your okay. What would you do differently uh, if you have a, a, another uh, tricky case like this? Well, I think that you, you can treat uh, all cases with instability, fracture, uh, non-unions. Using arthroscopy is so important to assess exactly what is the, the problem of the patient. But uh, it's so important to check all the ligaments because uh, there is a, a term that said that you have a hammer, everything like looks a nail, uh, and not all the cases are the same. Probably in this case, uh, the main problem is that probably we don't check all the ligaments because everything was the normal case. It's so important to use, to complete the completely uh, anamnesis of the of the joint using arthroscopy. As Gustavo, as René said, it's so important to check the dick, the, the dicey ligament or, or the radionate ligaments, all both, because in this case are the key points of the, of the patient. This is maybe, our remark. Maybe the, the scapulonate ligament is not the most important. We need not to, uh, to forget everything around. Thank you, Pedro, for... Uh, this case, any other comments? So, uh, and summary, summary the, 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 the comments of the, the Pedro, Lucien, and you is the luxation of the, the radius, compromise of the right long large radial nail ligament, and assess in the, the arthroscopy is 
most important uh, complex of the treatment in the scapulonary uh, uh, tears. So yeah, th this is uh, the most important key keys in, in the treatment of the, the, the pathology of the teeth. Hmm? Thank you, uh, Rene. Uh, Lucian, I think you have a very last question and after you can uh, close. No question? No, no For question, but I, I want to, uh, to make a comment. Uh, I think that we learn a lot from uh, complications and we learn a lot from uh, people that take their complications and, and manage it and, uh, and repair them, you know? So we learned a lot from the cases today. It was an amazing uh, afternoon. Yes, thank you for uh, sharing your cases. I would like really to congratulate Diego and Paula for their uh, very nice uh, presentation. Uh, good job. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, uh, thank you, everyone, for joining. Uh, thank you, Pedro, for accepting to join. Johnny Pli, all my co-organizers, uh, Lucian, Lorenzo, René, Gustavo Gomez, everyone. Thank you. Uh, see you uh, May on uh, July 29th. We will have uh, two cases uh, once again. And uh, have a nice uh, weekend. And uh, see you very soon. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye. 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 Thank bye, you. Bye-bye.